Coming up on UT10 News, a look at the hazing controversy across Ohio colleges. And we'll also let you know if now is the right time to get a flu shot. Plus, our own Jessica Zintek was on the pitch Thursday as the Rockets look to pick up their first win in MAC play. Your news in 10 minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bailey Lustig. And I'm Jada McGee. With deer hunting season underway, the Department of Natural Resources is warning hunters to look out for signs of a potentially deadly disease. UT10's Taylor Dively joins us live in the studio. Taylor, it's called chronic wasting disease. How does it affect the animals? Bailey and Jada, the deer could lose bodily functions, act abnormally, or ultimately die. Cases of the disease have been present in Michigan since 2015 and can now be found in 23 states. Ohio has not yet had a case, but the containment zone in Michigan is slowly making its way towards the state line. Because of how easily the disease can be spread, the DNR made it a requirement to hunters that deer harvested within the containment zones must be brought to a DNR post within 48 hours of being harvested to test for CWD. On top of that, baiting is illegal in the Lower Peninsula. I think banning the baiting and controlling the herd is a very good way to control it. And I think if they don't, we're going to lose our deer herd. Humans don't need to worry about contracting the disease, but need to know the rules and regulations where they are hunting. Back to you. Thanks, Taylor. According to Babson College, 5% of students admit to being hazed. And 40% of advisors are reported to knowing about hazing prior to allegations. UT10's Destiny Cadell takes a look at what UT is doing about hazing, as another Ohio college deals with major hazing controversy. Last Thursday, Ohio University Marching 110 joined 19 other fraternities and sororities in OU's hazing allegations. All 20 organizations are suspended until further notice. I feel like in today's society, everybody has learned what's right and what's wrong, whether it's from your parents, social media, school, or any other extracurricular activity. And I feel as if hazing is zero tolerance. Every year, during the last week of September, all Greek councils have National Hazing Prevention Week. This helps bring awareness to all college campuses. When we get a report or allegation of hazing through our office, um, we immediately put in a report to the University of Conduct process. Reporting for UT10 News, I'm Destiny Cadell. The most recent statistics from the CDC show nearly 40,000 people died from gun-related deaths in 2017. This past Saturday at the New Life Community Center, many voiced their concerns with gun violence and their children's safety. 18-year-old activist Marcel McClinton, co-founder of March for Our Lives, led the panel in highlighting common concerns and ways to take action. You call your rep, you call your senator, you call your governor, whatever. You make phone calls and you write emails and letters and keep pressure applied where it needs to be applied. He graduated from high school this past May and is currently running for city council. A Toledo group is preparing high school students to be ready to take on the real world. Leadership Toledo recently hosted its 15th annual community breakfast to promote various programs that support young leaders. More than 500 people, including 55 high school students, came together to talk about ideas about taking responsibility in the community. They establish all the values necessary to set a good foundational uh, base of leadership, and really they're just great at what they do. This year, Leadership Toledo raised $95,000 to help fund their programs. According to the United States Census, the Hispanic population is one of the largest ethnic minorities. It makes up 18% of the nation's population. UT10's Pierre Thompson looked into how UT is celebrating Hispanic culture on campus. I think I've definitely learned to appreciate it more and appreciate other cultures more because uh, I think one of the things that a lot of people fail to realize is like Latino culture is made up of part of European culture and part of like indigenous cultures and part of like black cultures. There are over 5.2 percent of Latina undergrads that attend UT's campus. The Office of Multicultural Student Success highlights Hispanic Heritage Month by bringing awareness to emerging issues on campus from September 15th to October 15th every year. 
Hispanic Heritage Month um, is a great way to kick off the academic year through food, music, dancing, um, and just helping people understand um, that the contributions of Latinos in the United States and around the world. The University of Toledo is exhibiting Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Jose Galvez in the Carson Library who is the first Mexican American staff to work for the LA Times and won the Pulitzer Prize in 1984. To stay updated with all history and heritage months throughout the whole year, visit ut10news.com and click the OMSS link. Toledo, Ohio, I'm Pierre Thompson, UT10 News. The Ohio Department of Health reports that there have been eight confirmed hospitalizations for the flu this year. That number is expected to rise. That's why the University of Toledo is encouraging everyone to get a flu shot. To get a flu shot, you just need your UTAB login information and your student ID. The Director of Infection Prevention and Control says getting the flu shot is better than nothing. Is it 100% effective? It's not 100% effective. However, if you don't get the flu shot, you have zero chance of fighting the flu off. There will be a flu shot clinic tomorrow in Mulford Library from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. UT estimates that students use 700,000 straws per year. In order to cut down on plastic, all on-campus dining areas have made a switch to biodegradable paper straws. In addition, Starbucks has adopted a strawless lid. Plastic straws are unable to be recycled due to their small size and light weight. They work just, just as good as plastic straws. Um, they're durable and introducing them into the environment is not a, a horribly bad thing. We reached out to representatives from Aramark, but they were unable to comment. I'm Jessica Zintek, and this is your UT10 Sports Report. It was an exciting weekend in Rocket Sports. The women's softball team took on the Detroit Mercy Titans in their final exhibition game, and the football team traveled south for their big rivalry game. But first, on Thursday, the women's soccer team faced off against the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Both teams were off to a slow start, but the game got physical. Keeper Ariana Brewer goes up to make the save and takes a hard hit. With two minutes left in the half, the ball is played into Anita Mancini, who chips it over the keeper for the first goal of the game. 22 seconds into the half, Sophia Lewis passes to Ashton Cassell and she scores. The Eagles fight back. Kristen Holleberger dodges Sheridan Boofy to get this goal. Then Stitch Curry outruns the defense and blows it past the keeper into the bottom corner. Stonehouse runs with the ball and shoots, making this her first career goal. And finally, Tatiana Woodworth shoots. Boom goes the dynamite into the upper 90, giving the Rockets their final goal of the game. Toledo wins 6-1. You can catch the team at home this week on Friday at 7 against the Ball State Cardinals and again on Sunday at 1 against the Miami Redhawks. Now we head over to Scott Park to check out the women's softball team's face-off against the Detroit Mercy Titans. Sophomore Aaron Hunt starts the game and works quickly, striking out two in the first. The Rockets blast off in the first as first baseman Megan Peru steps up to the plate and sends this rocket over the fence, scoring three. Rockets lead 4-0 going into the second. In the third, Titans get their first run after Dana Vitale hustles home off of this double from first baseman McKenna Tangue. To the fifth, Toledo Samantha Golden smacks this double into left and sends home another run. Titan Sammy Sinclair gives up a run after this wild pitch allowing Golden to score. Final score, Rockets 9, Titans 1. Hey, Aaron Hunt threw a fantastic game. Our hitters came through in the first inning. Morgan Pavrud hit a three-run homer. Raylan Nyreen hit a home run. Becca Yenrick hit a home run. Um, we executed really well, both offensively and defensively today. So the girls played great. 2019 marks 100 years of rivalry with that team down south. On Saturday, the football team traveled 25 miles down I-75 for the iconic Battle of I-75. For the first time in nine years, the Bowling Green Falcons defeated the Rockets. Final score, 20, Rockets, 7. That's it for UT10 News. For the latest breaking news from campus, go to our website, ut10news.com. And I'm Bailey Lustig for Jada McGee, Jessica Zintek, and all of our crew. Thank you for watching.